I'm Mike. I'm Jason. I'm John. This is Snake Envy. We're happy to have John with us from Morphet Reptiles. So we are going to be talking about another special guest here in a little bit. But we, uh, last weekend, were down in southern Arizona, and we were looking for these guys. Uh, primarily, we were hoping to see a whole bunch of species, but it ended up, <laughs> this was the only one. I think I asked you, would you have rather seen just the western green rat snakes, uh, or no green rat snakes, but several other cool species? Now, this particular trip, green rats, just because that's what we were, that was our main target, and uh, different time of the year, different conditions, different snakes are out, so we built the trip specifically around the green yeah. rats, so I wasn't surprised to not see anything else, but um, it would have been nice to, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it, it didn't come as a surprise. Um, yeah, the the times when you know we would have seen ten other species, there's a good chance we wouldn't have even seen one of these. So, right, right. Um, it, so, you go down there, it's kind of kind of pick your poison. So it was fascinating going down there with you guys. I was familiar with these guys in the past, but only you know on the periphery. I really didn't know much about them. Yeah. And since I've been spending time with you guys, I've learned a lot more. And then going on this trip was really exciting for me. But uh, one of the early legends in the hobby, Rick Blair, was a mentor to both of you. And did he kind of turn you on to these guys, or kind of turned me? I was I was on his waiting list early on, and then I got off of it. So he used to offer. I don't. Those. I don't even think I knew about. It. I think he like actually turned me on to the species. I don't even. I may have seen him in a field guide or something yeah. before. Yeah. But I ne definitely never saw him in real life. But yeah, they were impossible to get from him, and it was also impossible for us to go find them based off of his instructions yeah. too, because he <laughs> let us kind of kind of astray in the. Certain areas. <laughs> That's pretty common. <laughs> so I loved you guys telling me the story about that. So he turned you on to the species and got you excited about it. And he gave you some general advice on where to go find them. But as is often common in the hobby uh, among herpers, and particularly for something so rare, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in detail. He didn't... Uh, he didn't tell you everything he could have. Well, and so you guys had to do a lot of learning on your yeah. own. Yeah. The timing of the year and stuff like that. Um, I actually was on the, his waiting list pretty early on to get some of those. And I was new to the hobby. And so when I heard that they can be a little difficult, as a new hobbyist, I backed out. Yeah. Because I didn't want to struggle, you know. Yeah. There were so many other easier yeah. snakes to keep. Um, so the other thing that's fascinating about what you guys were telling me is you guys have literally spent approximately 30 years <laughs> going down to Arizona. Now, first off, John, tell us about the range uh, throughout the world and, and here in the United States. Well, we're the, the end of the range, the most northern uh, part of the range, and the, really just comes up uh, through Central America and uh, Mexico and uh, quite common and, and throughout those in, those regions. Yeah, beginning and in then, Costa Rica and then yeah. all the way north. Yeah, they, kind of, they have west down the west coast in Mexico, but they are in the Yucatan. They kind of loop yeah, back, up back up in the Yucatan yeah. Peninsula. So. Um, and then the U.S., they just come up, three little fingers come up to, through the bottom of uh, south central to southeast arizona and and it's literally and for about it's just a little chunk of mexico in the miles. u.s yeah, 50 miles, miles into the united states Maybe. and it's if that. even and that is the only place in the united states you can find these guys now the other thing when i was just doing a little homework on these in in light of our trip uh this is one of those unique genuses where there is only one species so there right. are 
dozens of rat snake species throughout the world and including several here in the United States. But this particular rat snake genus, this is it. Yeah. The Western green rat snake is the only species in that genus, which is really cool. It is cool. Um, and their colors vary. So they're known for being green here in the U.S. and in, in most of Mexico. But the further south you go, their colors actually vary. They can be tan. They can be brown. And we'll see if you can pick it up on the camera and we'll do some close-ups. But when these guys are born, typical of other rat snake species, uh, brown pattern. And that varies too uh, yeah. by locality. So in Arizona, they're typically straw pattern okay, uh, or straw color. Straw and then color. they have a, a just kind of a brown pattern. Yeah. Very similar to any other rat snake, the, the blocky pattern down their back. And, uh, but uh, the ones from the Yucatan, they're almost like a, a reddish color. Interesting. Um, they, they, uh, uh, but then they turn into the same thing and, as they, yeah. as they but mature. Like these have like almost like sets of twin spots where right. in the Yucatan, very typical <clears throat> blotching to a normal rat snake or even they almost look pit, pitiophis, uh, with the big yeah. bolt saddles, you know. And we'll do some close-ups. We estimate this guy's probably a yearling, and you can just see those double spots going down his back. We'll get some close-ups. So his pattern is still in the process of disappearing. And on the sides, you can just pick up a little bit of it. So uh, probably a yearling, and as he gets older, that pattern's going to disappear completely. But you can just see where it was. And the color will probably get a little darker as well. Yeah, for uh, sure. This green color. But gorgeous snakes, white belly and chin. Uh, typical of rat snakes, they've got that white chin. Uh, they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the rat snake tail. <laughs> uh, we were down there doing everything legally. We had our hunting licenses. Uh, I ended up keeping this male. No, oh, timing again. Um how long they've been out from brumation. Um, yeah. The temperatures. Uh, like with, with a lot of snakes, you'll see if you go out in the field, the males will come out before the females or the females will come out before the males. So you'll find, oh, or the neos will come out first and you'll find a bunch of that particular gender or age group. And then all of a sudden something happens and the, the switch gets flipped and you won't be seeing any neos and now you'll yeah. be seeing adult males. Um, and so we just happened to be down um, when the adult males were out on the crawl looking yeah. for the ladies. Um, so just a little more detail about what you guys have spent the last 30 years doing. It's focused mostly on timing, uh, trying to dial in exactly when they're going to be most active at different times of the year. Uh, tell us a little bit about their kind of their reclusivity during the summer months these are guys that kind of disappear for a good part of the year like a lot of snakes yeah um, in arizona where where it's extremely hot you know over 100 degrees um these guys i from what i understand spend the summer underground like for months yeah i think you could compare their lifestyle to a gila they uh, come out during Certain times of the year, um, their timing is a little bit different, but as far as time spent above ground and underground, it's pretty similar. Um, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if these things are only at the surface 10% of their life. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and tell us a little bit about the rarity in the hobby. You kind of touched on the fact that some of their care is kind of the opposite of other colubrids. They like things a little cooler than most colubrids. And part of that's because they're accustomed to a life spent underground primarily. Um, but you don't see many of these guys in captivity. No, and you never, you almost never see them available on the market. They're just, because anytime there is any available, they're jumped on instantly. It's like, there's a few species like that. Zanana, uh, California mountain king snakes, they're gone as soon as they're, yeah. you know, and same <laughs> See, with and these. They, they have similar requirements, and that typically doesn't fit into somebody's whole snake room. Right. And most, exactly. most snake rooms are going to be 10 degrees too warm. Um, 
they you almost have to have a separate space for triaspis or for zanata um just because they they like like you said they they live the majority of their life in a granite or in a you know yeah. rocky refrigerator and they're they're cool most of their life and we found this guy all the snakes that we found uh halfway up a mountainside so and it was six kilometers up <laughs> a yeah. windy road so the when we say underground what we really are referring to is probably deep within inside the mountain. inside yeah, the mountainside yeah. so they're getting back into those rock cuts and finding their way into the mountainside. Uh, do we know much about their total range in terms of elevation? Is it limited to those mountain ranges, or do you think they're living down in the valley as well? And Jason, they know better from I Mexico. Think, you know, I think they're more of a foothill, you know, bench yeah. area. They're not going to be high in a mountain range. They're not going to be, they'll be at the base, you know, up like. Yeah. Which so is where I, we found these guys, yeah. about, I, uh, about I, halfway. I think they probably are going to start tapering off right about where pyros start getting thick because I doubt they're going to be wanting to compete with pyros. Um, Maybe, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. So beautiful snakes, rare snakes, uh, obviously excited to have one, and... Uh, yeah, this, this is an amazing species and a species that a lot of people aren't really all that familiar with. Anything else you guys would like to share? Just now, are you on the brink? You you have some breeding pairs now, no, or you're I'm still waiting for snakes to get to year. breeding age? So next yeah. year. Um, so yeah, maybe you'll have some available in the next couple of years. Maybe. That's the hope. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. But like Jason said, they're... You can't have you can't produce enough of them so um yeah stuff like that i mean that's it, it probably won't even make it to morph market it's just yeah they, they've been spoken for forever yeah you know and these were plus holdbacks if these were common as common as they are in mexico they probably wouldn't be as desired but, but you guys wouldn't be going down uh, like, making I mean, a twelve-hour drive every yeah. year. <laughs> no, I. That's this is a cool snake. Look at that head. Oh yeah, they're they're just gorgeous. Um, and we don't have a ton of green snakes in the U.S. You know, it's it's rare for a green species to be living here. We have uh, yeah. vine snakes in certain parts of the Smooth country. Greens, rough greens, rough greens. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, Green snakes in general are a little bit rare in this part of the world, so very, very cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Please like, subscribe, comment. Are you familiar with this species? Is this a species that you've ever desired or that you've ever wanted to go try and find? Let us know in the comments. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.